All right, welcome back to another part 107 test practice video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about METAR reports. Um, specifically, we're gonna be going over two practice problems. So if you want, you can pause the video, try to solve this problem on your own, and then I'll go over it. So here we have this problem. It's talking about figure 12, which is down here. Um, it's asking, what are the current conditions for Chicago Midway Airport? And then it's got the three letters for the Chicago Airport, and then it's prepended with this K. Cool, and then we have these three answers that I strongly, strongly recommend that you just ignore for now. Um, you come to the answer organically so that then you can take whatever answer you got from the METAR um, and compare it to the answer choices so that you're not swayed by one answer choice or another. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So uh, since we're only interested in the conditions for the Chicago Midway Airport, we can go ahead and go down the line and see if any of these airport stations match up with the one that we're looking for. So in this case, we're looking for MDW. So that would be this one here. So we can just go ahead and ignore the rest of this stuff. Okay, don't don't pay attention to it. So we're just looking at this here. Right off the bat, we have SPECI. Um, these are issued when there has been a significant change from the METAR. Um, so that's like changes to wind direction, visibility, ceiling, etc. Then we have the KMDW, the airport code. Um, after that, we have 121856Z. Uh, this represents the time and date that this METAR was issued. 12 represents the date. And then 1856, this represents the time. So remember, all these times are in Zulu or UTC, Coordinated Universal Time. So that's standardized time so that we don't have to consider time zones with these METARs. So this is in military time or 24-hour uh, time. So this is actually like 6.56 p.m. If you took it out of military time. Okay, so uh, that's what this chunk here means. If we move on to the next part of the METAR, we have 320. 320 is the direction of the wind in degrees from zero to 360 degrees. So in this case, the wind is at 320 degrees. And then next numbers after that is zero five. So this is the speed of the wind in knots. So um, because we don't have a number out front, we can interpret this as just five and then um, it's five knots. Sometimes if the wind is gusting, uh, for example, if we take a look up here, you see this G and then two more numbers. Uh, this means that our wind is going at 12 knots and gusting at 18. Moving on to the next part, we have this one, one and a half SM. What does that mean? one, one and a half SM. This is the visibility. So here, what this is saying is you can see 1.5 statute miles ahead in front of you. This is just visibility. After that, we have this RA. What that stands for is type of weather that's happening right now. So there's a lot of abbreviations for these weather observations. You'll just have to sort of memorize these for METAR reports. A lot of them are pretty self-explanatory. Like for example, RA stands for rain. You can kind of see the leap they took to make that. I think one that makes a little bit less sense to me is mist, uh, BR. But uh, I read this one YouTube comment that said that they think of this as baby rain. And I thought that was brilliant. That really helped me to remember that. So whenever you need to remember these weather phenomena, there's some more crazy ones like BA, volcanic ash, probably don't see that very often in the METAR, but maybe if you're near a volcano, you don't ever know. Um, one other thing to notice is these modifiers here. So if there was a minus or a plus in front of RA like this, minus RA plus RA, that would mean that there's either light rain or heavy rain. Here, since there is no qualifier, it's just that RA. Um, that means that it's not heavy or light, it's just it's moderate. This is rain. Next we have O, B, C, and then three numbers. So O, B, C, 0, 0, 7. What that means is this is referring to the cloud coverage, the sky condition. So 
this first chunk here, this refers to overcast. That means that there's a lot of clouds in the sky. <laughs> um, this is, these are more contractions that you're gonna have to memorize for METAR reports. Once again, a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory, like for example, scattered. They got rid of a bunch of letters, broken, BKN, etc., etc. So that's what the first part of it means. The second part refers to the ceiling. So for these, since there's only three numbers to represent data that can be very, very large. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just gonna to wanna to append two zeros at the end. So what this means is it is overcast sky with clouds at 700 feet. Make sure that you're not just thinking that this is overcast with the clouds starting at seven feet, All right? If you just sort of like think about that to yourself, that doesn't really make too much sense. So uh, make sure you're appending those two zeros. Next, we have the temperature and dew point. So 17 refers to the current temperature, and then the 16 refers to the dew point. Yeah, not a whole lot to that. Next, we have our altometer, our, our pressure. So this is signified in inches of mercury. So A, that just stands for altometer, and then 2980. So just imagine putting a period right in the middle of that, and that means that there are 29.8 inches of mercury for the pressure. Um, and then it's kind of hard to read. Let me get rid of these. At the end, sometimes if there is something remarkable to explain in the METAR, you'll have these remarks. So um, not super important that you need to know this for this problem, but this remark means that rain started 35 minutes after the hour. And since the current hour that we're referring to is six, we can say rain started at 18.35. So 6.35 p.m. That about covers all of the parts of this METAR. So let's go ahead and see if there is an answer that matches what we've learned from this METAR part. So remember, we said that the sky was 700 feet in overcast. So this first part of A is correct. Visibility one, one and a half SM and rain. So all of this perfectly matches up with what we have figured out from our METAR. So we're gonna go ahead and say that that's the correct answer. Um, B isn't correct, right? We see we have that the sky is 7,000 feet overcast, but since we just had the seven and then we appended two zeros at the end, we can say that this is incorrect. It is not 7,000 feet overcast. It is also not heavy rain. Remember, if it had been heavy rain, there would have been a plus sign out front. So this is incorrect. Uh, C, it starts off good. Sky 700 feet overcast, but then it says our visibility is 11. That's incorrect. So this is wrong. Let's go ahead and move on to the second practice problem. So in this problem, we are asked for the wind conditions at, I love this, this name, Wink, Wink, Texas, and then it's abbreviation K and then I and K. We've got those three answers we're gonna be ignoring. Let's find it within our METAR. Looks like this is it here. You can kind of go quickly through this METAR uh, since we've kind of delved into it. So not really an important piece of information. The airport code, the time at which the METAR was issued and the date, so on the 12th at 18.45 Zulu, so at 6.45 p.m. Um, and then this next part is what we're really interested in. This is the wind section of it. One way that, I, that it helped for me to memorize this is that this section will always end with KT, which is not. So you don't specifically need to memorize the order these go in as long as you can pick out pieces of information that help you identify that this is the part of the METAR that is talking about wind. So this first part is the direction of the wind in degrees from zero to 360 degrees. So this is saying where the wind is at 110 degrees. This next part has to do with the wind speed. So this would be 12 knots. And then the part after that has to do with whether there is wind gusts. So in this case, since we see that G, we're saying, okay, the gusts are 18 knots. So we kind of got everything we need from the METAR. We don't really need to read the rest of this because the rest of it doesn't have to do with our wind conditions. So let's go ahead and see if we can find an answer that matches up with what we've learned from this METAR. So is it calm? No, I wouldn't say it's calm. Is it 110 degrees at 12 knots, gusts at 18 knots? Exactly, that is exactly correct. The reason why calm is incorrect is, well, we have all this wind information. The wind 
is at 12 knots. It gusts at 18 knots. So it, I wouldn't call this calm by any means. And it's also not 111 degrees at two knots. Uh, the reason why is we broke it down and if it was 111, the METAR would look something like this instead. So hopefully that helps with METAR reports on the part 107 test. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you and I hope you have a great rest of your day.